Hello and welcome to the IDKD Refresher Series. I'm going to be presenting a case of progressive ankle pain and swelling after a fall. I'm William Morrison, Professor of Radiology at Thomas Jefferson University Hospital in Philadelphia, United States. Our patient is a 36-year-old woman with a history of fall and twisting of her ankle. She had swelling and pain which had progressively worsened. She visited an urgent care clinic and radiographs were acquired. Initial radiographs show no fracture. There is soft tissue swelling and you can see this swelling at the anterior margin of the ankle joint suggesting an underlying ankle joint effusion. However, the joint spaces were preserved. She was treated with non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs provided with a brace and sent home. One month later, she continues to have pain with increasing swelling. Now more generalized, radiographs show diffuse soft tissue edema around the ankle, which has increased compared to the prior exam one month ago. In addition, it looks like the soft tissue around the ankle joint has increased, suggesting an increased joint effusion. She was uh, continued with her treatment of non anti-inflammatory drugs and sent home again. Another month passes and she cannot bear weight. An MRI was ordered. And now you can see that there is a large joint effusion, which is complex. You see that there is diffuse soft tissue edema surrounding the ankle joint, pericapsular edema, and subcutaneous edema. We see tremendous bone marrow edema in the tibia, the talus, and surrounding bones. And we see joint space narrowing and erosions of the central aspect of the joint and at the joint margins. A three-phase bone scan was acquired. We see on the early flow phase that there is rapid uptake around the ankle joint. In the blood pool and delayed phase, there is concentration of radiotracer in and around the ankle joint. Radiographs acquired at the time now show diffuse joint space narrowing and erosions as we saw on the MRI. And again, there is this diffuse soft tissue edema surrounding the joint indicating large joint effusion and surrounding pericapsular edema. A follow-up CT was acquired following treatment. And here you can see very nicely the erosions of the articular surfaces and the surrounding soft tissue edema. Final diagnosis after aspiration was bacterial septic arthritis with Staph aureus. The differential diagnosis could have included post-traumatic arthritis, for instance, ligament tear with ankle instability, which can lead to aggressive looking arthritis, non-infectious inflammatory arthritis, such as rheumatoid arthritis or gout, or even neuropathic disease if there was a history of diabetes especially. So this diagnosis was delayed due to the confounding history of injury. You can get infection related to trauma or following trauma, possibly due to hyperemia and transient bacteremia. However, in this case, swelling and inflammation was initially assumed to be related to trauma. So the teaching point here is to always have a high index of suspicion, could this be infection, especially on imaging when you see periarticular edema, what I call an angry effusion, always consider infection. And when in doubt, aspirate it out. And I just wanna show you what I mean by angry effusion. Here's a different case with septic sacroiliitis. And here at the left sacroiliac joint, we can see diffuse marrow replacement around the SI joint diffuse bone marrow edema, and soft tissue edema around the SI joint itself, extending into the adjacent soft tissues. This is what I mean by angry effusion. And what this is a result of is a small capacity joint with a rapidly expanding joint effusion, resulting in rupturing of the capsule and surrounding periarticular soft tissue edema. And this is not specific for infection, but should prompt you to look for other signs of infection. 
The same process occurs in other joints around the body, especially the smaller joints. In this case, at the sternoclavicular joint, we again see this diffuse soft tissue edema extending from the joint into the adjacent soft tissues with erosions on the CT. Another example, septic arthritis of the finger. Notice that there's not a large joint effusion here because there's not a large joint capacity. In small capacity joints, the fluid from septic arthritis often decompresses, however it can, into the adjacent soft tissues, into a tendon sheath, into a bursa, or elsewhere. Now, other chronic inflammatory arthropathies don't generally cause this kind of aggressive periarticular edema pattern. Here you can contrast the septic arthritis that we saw before here on the left with a case of psoriatic arthritis involving the SI joint, where you have bone marrow edema and erosions, but you don't have the pericapsular edema that we see with septic arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis has been characterized as mass-like synovitis, and here at the elbow joint, we see complex joint effusion, and we see mass-like synovitis expanding all the recesses. But notice, even though that there is a large effusion here, the effusion collected over a long period of time. So we don't see the aggressive periarticular edema that we see with infection. Now one pitfall, crystalline disorders like gout in this case can look very aggressive in the surrounding soft tissues. Here we have destruction of the first metatarsophalangeal joint with surrounding fluid and soft tissue edema. Now another important point about infection, especially in deep joints like the sacroiliac joint, is that they are next to nerves sometimes, and the sacroiliac joint is uh, no exception. We have the sciatic notch and the sciatic nerve going right under the SI joint, and inflammation extending from the SI joint into the periarticular tissues can irritate the sciatic nerve and lead the clinician to think that it might be a disc herniation that's causing their shooting pain. You want to avoid this delay in diagnosis. Infection can also simulate tumor and vice versa, leading to a small round cell pattern as seen in this case in a young patient with pain occurring at the upper arm. Here we see a aggressive looking lesion at the lateral aspect of the mid humerus. On MRI, we see destruction of the cortex and we see ill-defined bone marrow edema within the humeral shaft. And this turned out to be staph aureus, but could have simulated a tumor. Here's a literature describing septic arthritis after blunt trauma and in other situations. I encourage you always to look at the big picture. Is this the scream by Edvard Munch or normal anatomy? Is this Madonna and baby Jesus? Or is it a ganglion cyst of the knee? Is this Michelangelo's David? Or is it an osteochondral lesion of the talus? So thank you for your time and stay tuned for more IDKD cases.